This is a CBC Podcast. Well, on Friday, the Premier Tim Houston's government made good on its election promise to deliver a plan to fix health care. But critics say the plan doesn't necessarily deliver. It outlines six solutions to work on over four years. That includes becoming a magnet for health providers to provide the care that people need and deserve and to address the factors affecting health and wealth well-being. It also says it will build in accountability. But the opposition says that's what's lacking, timelines and targets. According to the government, benchmarks and goals should be released by early summer, and you'll be able to track them online. The plan also includes steps already taken, such as offering jobs to all nursing graduates in the province, increasing wages for continuing care assistance, creating patient transfer services to free up paramedics and new urgent treatment centres in Parsborough and North Sydney. To find out more detail about the plan, we have contacted Nova Scotia's Minister of Health, Michelle Thompson. Good morning. Good morning. So the plan is in part a response to what you heard from healthcare workers during the Speak Up for Healthcare tour. What are some of the key ways that what you heard is reflected in the plan? So the Speak Up for Healthcare tour started um, very early after we formed government and we were able to travel the province. Uh, We started in Neils Harbour, actually. We started in Cape Breton, uh, the team that I worked with, and we heard directly from healthcare workers about some of the frustrations and some of the efficiencies or inefficiencies, I guess, that would really make a difference. And it it kind of reinforced and built on what we had promised in our platform. And so uh, we talked to a number of people. People were able to give feedback through a website. There were videos called Pitch the Premier that were sent with a number of ideas. And so uh, this uh, action for healthcare really is built, uh, is, found, is founded on the voices of those healthcare workers that we spoke to directly. Can you give me a specific example of something that you heard that's been worked into the plan? Yeah, there's been a number of things, actually. So we did hear, as an example, one of the things we heard a lot about when we traveled the province was around inefficiencies the hiring process and how it could be a barrier to getting people into positions. And we know that vacancies uh, in our uh, healthcare system are significant. So able to come back and look at um, immediately what are the things that we were able to do. We didn't wait for this plan. We started, um, you know, actions right away after that tour. And so now how do we invest? Becoming a magnet for healthcare workers is one of those ways. So what are the things that we put in place Um, How do we work across government to attract people, um, like, you know, reducing licensure uh, complications for people that are coming from outside the province and outside the country? So that would be one example that we heard loud and clear on the tour and something that is um, achievable but very, very important for us to tackle uh, early on to address um, the the shortcomings in in our vacancies. Well, let's talk a little more about this making Nova Scotia a magnet for health providers. You know, we've been talking about trying to attract more health care providers for years. So what is going to be different? What's going to be done differently? Yeah, so there's a number of things. And I think what I would say as well is that, you know, um, nothing is written in stone. So as we continue down the path, if there's new ideas and new opportunities for us, we will take those because we want to be. Uh, that magnet. We need to fill those vacancies. So um, there's a number of things. Number one, we have to look at our hiring processes. We heard a lot from uh, physicians and internationally trained uh, graduates about the difficulty in in achieving a license here. So we've been working with colleges, the respective colleges, in order to tackle that. We're working uh, with labor skills and immigration as well. We've increased uh, nursing seats and uh, we've got a um, a new partnership with Michener, so that uh, institutes that we're able to train people locally. So there's not just one thing. Uh, we also want to look at the the retirees who've left our system. So that uh, when they leave, it goes a lot of experience and knowledge. And so maybe folks don't want to come back and work full time. But what are the opportunities for those folks to contribute still to our system through perhaps a mentorship program where we have novice um, healthcare providers who could really benefit from their mentorship? So those would be examples. And uh, the other thing we heard is really about the importance of digitalizing and, and uh, increasing the technology as a recruitment tool as well. So, so this plan is not um, singular um, initiatives. It's actually a whole systems approach in terms of how we strengthen our, our workforce. 
I want to ask you about uh, one of the actions um, under the provide care that Nova Scotians need and deserve. Now, this particular action is called um, strengthening local decision making by empowering leaders in each zone to develop uh, clinical health services plans. Does this mean giving back some of the local control that was eliminated when health authorities were amalgamated? We did hear from people as we traveled the province how important it is that communities and and, uh, facilities and services have the opportunity to, um, you know, work and make decisions locally. So, yes, we need to look at how that happens. Um, We also know, and we we see it all the time, about the difference between what works really well in urban centres versus what works in rural communities. And so people need to have that freedom to be able to plan services based on the assets in their community and, uh, you know, meet the needs of the communities where they are. So it's very important to us that that communities uh, regain some of the control that they had and that we work with them to support them in order for that to happen. Do you have a sense of... Excuse me, how you're going to do that? Um, Right now, it's really around working uh, through the structure that we have. So uh, each zone has uh, like VPs who work very closely with folks on the ground. And we're looking at those processes now. Um, We are working really uh, closely with communities. So every community maybe has a different challenge. So perhaps what's a challenge in Vedek, as an example, would be very different than a challenge in in Amherst or Spring Hill. So it's really... um, for those VPs to work with the local leadership at those community levels to understand what, what folks need and how need and how we can support them. Um, you know, we've done a lot of great work recently with guys for own cancer. They have physician recruitment teams there and we've been able to really lean in and, and support them in, in um, you know, bringing on new physicians into their area as an example. Now, there's also a plan to um, help reduce wait lists by completing another 2,500 additional surgeries in the next 12 months. I know the Liberals have pointed out there are, in fact, 27,000 people waiting for surgery at the moment. You know, how is this going to um, to, to help reduce that wait, wait list? Mm-hmm. So we need to continue to, to, uh, to move through our surgical wait list in the, in the same way that we have. So we still want to meet our regular uh, number of surgeries on an annual basis, and we want to be able to increase uh, the numbers by a, a minimum of 2,500. So we are looking at, you know, where are the, where is the capacity within our system? So we've looked at Dartmouth General, and we've looked at Glace Bay, and we've looked at Cape Breton Regional to see how do we extend hours past um, kind of those regular banking hours, but what are the opportunities in terms of our ability to um, work with um, other folks outside of the system, as an example, Swiss Scotia Surgery, to do some of those um, surgeries in a more timely fashion. They are still publicly funded. We will pay for those uh, through our, our budget process, but really expanding capacity. And so uh, as we scale up, um, our, our minimum target is 2,500, but you know, w- we will do whatever we can to, to, to work away at that uh, wait list. And uh, we do know that there has been an announcement of federal funding and we're waiting for details of that as well to see how we can further expand uh, those, uh, those services. I know one of the major criticisms of this plan from um, unions as well as uh, the opposition parties is that there are not benchmarks and goals attached to it. Why announce the plan without benchmarks and goals? Mm-hmm. So I think what the, the important part is that, that this is a, a multi-year uh, framework that we have started. And so this is laying the foundation, talking about the pillars uh, that, that we feel, the initiatives that are really going to be transformational in terms of our, our healthcare system. What's happening right now is that, that we are looking at our baseline data. We are understanding what are some of the meaningful ways that we can um, talk to Nova Scotians directly through that website about how we are progressing, where we're strong, and where we have areas of improvement. So we'll be looking at um, not only system performance, but we also want to look at population health outcomes, and we also want to look at, you know, the services that are provided. So it is a, it is a complex um, data set that we are gathering. We want to make sure that it's, you know, easily digestible by people and communities so that it is meaningful to them. And so that work continues, but we didn't want to wait. We wanted... Uh, during the sitting of the legislature to, to put out what our what our strategic plan is. Strategic plans are high level, and then we will continue to work on the details and, and get that to Nova Scotians uh, in the early early summer. How will people be able to see what progress is being made? So 
So we will have a website and uh, the information around uh, not only the, the pillars of the strategic plan, but also the, the things that we are measuring will be available on that website. Okay. And the final question and the big one, I guess, how much is all of this going to cost? I think in the in a short word, I would say lots. Um, we have been very clear that uh, it's going to need significant investment, not only in terms of how we invest in people, so we really want to invest in our workforce, but we also have infrastructure that we need to invest. So those are the, the bricks and mortars, but also around digitalization. So uh, this year, we, we are investing in the whole healthcare system, seniors in long-term care, Office of Addictions and Mental Health, and Department of Health and Wellness. Uh, our health budget is $5.7 billion, and it is significant. Um, but we, we know that, that year over year, those investments will pay off uh, in the end. And so we are committed to, um, to investing in what it takes in order to uh, change our health care system. All right. Michelle Thompson, thanks so much for joining us and uh, explaining all of this for us. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Michelle Thompson is Nova Scotia's Minister of Health. We did also request an interview with Premier Tim Houston, but he was not available. For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.